Cat is Maximus here, this time with a quick review of an older Milwaukee 6760 drywall screwdriver. Uh, this is a American-made unit, and it's definitely pretty high quality, although there were a few issues with these particular Milwaukee's and why they weren't popular. One, of course, is that they just used their drill motor design with a different casting on the front. And uh, it made it pretty darn heavy. And when you're driving drywall screws, you're driving hundreds, if not thousands of them. And that was a big issue. Plus, it was really pretty darn long. The bell hook was kind of an afterthought, and they do get bent like this. Even though it was a heavy-duty Milwaukee, it just it had some issues. All that extra weight and just throwing on a plastic nose piece here. You get this power cord out of here. <laughs> makes it a little bit unwieldy. Uh, when they get dropped, and I've actually seen a few of these used, and this is the first one that's actually been in good enough condition for me to pick it up because these things always seem to be cracked or they just get packed with dust. Not the best dust mitigation, and that really became true with the triggers. This one, let me plug it in here. This is when they started, they had the idea of having a quick, easy to change cord if the cord got damaged or worn out, which generally was okay, except for the fact that Milwaukee was charging like 30 bucks for these cords, which always sucked. So people really disliked standard cords. Part of the issues of the dust mitigation is they didn't, you know, improve the trigger or anything. So this trigger here, we can see I can move it quite a bit and just the whole potentiometer that's in it is just totally worn out from drywall dust and doesn't even engage till almost halfway. But it does still operate properly. So anyway, it wasn't, you know, it's a good drywall screwdriver, but it just definitely wasn't one of Milwaukee's best showings. And the biggest issue is just that weight. And even if you try to hold it like this, it's just... I mean, it's crazy. This thing's like almost a foot long from the nose to the back, and it just was a miss. It's 2,500 RPM with a 5-amp motor, so it's plenty of power, but modern ones are 4,000 RPM. They run a lot faster, and they're more compact and a lot lighter weight. That's, a, you know, the big difference is. I did want to point out a quick tip for setting the depth on these. You can drive a few screws to kind of get them going, but the best thing is to actually push a screw in and find where the clutch is not going to engage right here. That's where it's the teeth are on top of each other in the clutch. And that's the easiest way to set the depth. You just kind of do that and then see where it is and turn this collar black back and forth uh, until it reaches the right uh, depth. Sometimes they go a little bit deep and you just back off a notch or advance in a notch if you wanted to go uh, deeper. And this one does have a little arrow here. The aluminum nose is getting kind of beat up, but generally it seems to be okay. Let's give this a quick test and then I'll just do a quick little tear down. I couldn't dig up any short drywall screws. I got a couple three inch deck screws. We'll see how this works out. This is gonna be uh, not a normal situation because this is gonna be uh, a lot of friction. Normally when you're running these, this is pretty loud. You're just, you have them running continuously the whole time, and that's the point of the clutch, is you drive a screw and you pull it out, and then the bit isn't turning while the motor continues to run. You have a handful of screws that are all lined up, and you'll put it in, and you'll just drive one screw in, pull it out, get the next screw going, drive it in, and get a, quite a few screws done pretty quickly. So I'm going to kind of hand start this one. And that's the whole point of these, is you drive a whole bunch of screws and they just flush to the surface. They won't apply a certain amount of torque. They won't draw like layers of plywood together. But if you just want to make sure, for instance, when you're hanging drywall, that the screws just go flush or go just a little bit below flush and not put too much pressure on to pull through or to break it, that's exactly what these are for. I'll just do a simple tear down. Let me go and knock these screws out of the handle here. Here we are. Let's kind of work this pretty easy to take apart. And this is the way of Milwaukee drills until they went to they were bought out and went with the more ergonomic design. This is the way they were for uh, a real long time. One thing Milwaukee did do that, that was nice is they took the variable speed circuit instead of being inside the trigger switch. It's actually the separate unit that's mounted up here right behind the vent with high airflow. 
However, they didn't put any kind of protection in the switch we can see there. And so that was one of the big issues is that dust would get inside this. And even though this is an older American made unit, uh, they were, this was still the beginning when Milwaukee was cheaping out. We can see the motor here. It just doesn't have the, you know, has some decent varnishing on the windings, but there's no wrapping. We can see that it uses pinched instead of uh, stamp welded contact. So really not the, as good as they used to be, but still definitely heavy duty build quality. Let's take a quick look at the gearbox here. So this does have a double reduction gearbox. We'll just go ahead and hold the uh, diaphragm. It does appear to have a seal in there. Yes, indeed. Oh, and it's getting stuck. Come on now. I love it when these little seals get stuck like that. I'm going to go ahead and use a small screwdriver and just nice and gently go along here and just try to get this seal off of the front part of the gearbox because it's actually a thinner piece portion of metal that it's attached to versus there we go the the diaphragm and voila interestingly the whole clutch mechanism is internal so here's the clutch mechanism there's the dog teeth there's the spring that's always pushing it apart and then there's your output, the other side. And people often think, does Milwaukee actually put in uh, enough grease? And yes, Milwaukee always puts in tons of grease. Sometimes a bit too much. It's actually pretty worn, well worn. Of course, one of the nice Milwaukee traits, pretty much all their tools, unless there's certain situations, will have all helical cut gears and be all ball needle bearing let's see if this is not 100 percent of the time well that's gonna fall come out of there interestingly enough this gear is pr oh it there it goes this thing is actually kind of caught up in there just had to get a little tug they do get stuck one th another thing that really does set milwaukee apart is uh, where they can, they always use rolling bearings, ball bearings or needle bearings. Um, many other manufacturers and tools, almost all of them, uh, will have some lesser models or just some tools that don't, they don't think they need all rolling element bearings. And we'll use some sleeve bearings here and there. Milwaukee's always seem to just use rolling element bearings in so many situations. Um, this motor arbor looks pretty good. I can't even tell in the camera yet. One nice thing about that is they do balance the size of their arbors pretty well on Milwaukee's. All tools, the arbors will wear out eventually, but at least this one looks pretty decent. We can see down in here that that's a ball bearing. When you have helical cut gears like this, what ends up happening is when they're driving, since there's a slant, it kind of wants to push the gears apart. And so what Milwaukee does is use ball bearings so that it provides both smooth running when, for the lateral forces, the gears trying to push themselves apart, as well as the thrust forces, which are the gears trying to slide apart. Now on this gear, we have a thrust washer. So on one side, it's a ball bearing, and on the other side, it's a thrust washer because really the forces are more this way than they are this way and this would only come into play when it's being reversed which is something you uh, don't do very often on the tool so that's the one compromise Milwaukee does and something to be generally aware of if you have a drill that you're running in reverse it can wear out faster than if it's running in forward but another nice thing is this clutch portion this little rod I don't know if you can't you can just see the glint but there's actually a needle bearing that for the pilot. So the pilot bearing, like on a clutch transmission on a car, this is actually a needle bearing to pilot it. So that's what I mean. Milwaukee always tries to put in rolling bearings just wherever they can. And actually these dog teeth, there goes my shim, look really nice. Let me get this back together here. Actually, I am going to clean out some of this old grease, then I'll get it back together. 
So that was the end of my quick review and teardown of this old uh, Milwaukee. This was probably made in the, either the 90s or the early 2000s. I didn't bother to look up the serial number, but you can on the Milwaukee's. And you'll get a rough date of the series, just like uh, versions numbers of software tools have the same thing. They're usually labeled type 1, type 2, etc. Milwaukee keeps track of that through the actual serial numbers, and it goes all the way back almost a half century. So you can always find basically any old Milwaukee tool, and as long as you can get the model number and the serial number, uh, you'll be able to look it up and get wiring diagrams and part breakdowns. This was just a basic teardown. If you're actually going to fix this up, you know, you, these back bearings don't have the big reservoir of grease to help keep them lubricated. They only have what's just inside the bearing itself. So usually that's the first bearing to go out. So you want to pull the motor. It's like a, you know, three to five dollar bearing just to replace that back bearing. Do that when you replace the brushes. And to also be fair, being a 5 amp 2500 RPM, you know, Milwaukee did have a 4000 RPM one. Uh, but this was for the higher torque. Uh, for being able to drive things like deck screws, that type of stuff. If only they had provided better sealing for the triggers so those, those, those triggers just wouldn't wear out quite as quickly. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.